here. Do you think Giants quarterback Daniel Jones has done enough to be deemed the face of the Giants at quarterback moving forward after this season? Yeah, I think he's done enough. And I think that the challenge before the season started and when they hired Brian Dable and, and Joe Shane, it was, all right, we got to get the most out of Daniel Jones. Man, if you're a Giants fan sitting here right now, like, are you not impressed with how, being 6-2 and two and with the way that Daniel Jones has played? Daniel Jones has been the punching bag for, for New York fans for the last couple of years. And some of it deservedly so, but, but the quarterback always gets too much credit and too much blame. When you look at what Daniel Jones has been doing, all right, and, and Shregs, it's awesome what you just showed with, with talking with, with Joe Shane, and he just broke it all down. Like, the game-winning drives, and, and you, he showed the, the London highlights, and this is what I want to show you in, in addition to all that. Daniel Jones had a different leading receiver every week of the season. What you're seeing right now, all right, Shepard week one was the leading receiver, and then boom, that's it. You don't see him again. He's on IR. He's out. Kenny Galladay's been out almost all year. Every week, it was Richard James, Daniel Bellinger, rookie. Then it was Slayton. Daniel Jones is winning football games with, with a receiving core that no other quarterback in the NFL is having to deal with right now. So I look at the way Daniel Jones is taking care of the football. I look at, look, he's not throwing for 350 yards. He's not doing what, jo putting up numbers that Mahomes and Josh Allen and two are putting up. I don't think they would put up numbers like they're putting up if they had this receiving core. And I'm not trying to throw shade on the receiving core. I'm just, I'm looking at Dan Jones and I'm saying, one of the reasons that they loved him coming out of Duke was because he, he had a, a shoddy offensive line down to Duke. He didn't have a lot of big time receivers and yet he found a way to win games. And that's what you're seeing from Daniel Jones. He's not throwing for 40 yards. That's not his game. I think when you look at what Daniel Jones has done, in the fourth quarter with the game on the line, He's played his best football. That's what you want out of your quarterback. That's what you pay him for. You don't pay him for first and second quarter. You pay him for win can you win the game when he needs to on the fourth quarter. He's got five game-winning drives this season alone in the fourth quarter. So that's what they're looking at with DJ. Yeah, I agree. I think he's done enough. I remember in the offseason we said they have to win games because of Daniel Jones, and he's done that. He's gone out there. He's made clutch plays to win games. And on top of that, you heard what Joe Shane said. This guy's in the building First, he's doing everything he can. I remember I went on a visit to the New York Giants last year. Daniel Jones happened to be in the building. He walks in. The first thing he asks me is, how can I get better? Hmm. What are some things as a veteran? What did you do to stay You're in the You're a free agent so visiting, and that's what he says? Free agent visiting. He walks in, sits down, and talks with me for 10 minutes, this young quarterback. What did so you I tell him? Uh, a lot of stuff. Stuff that's helping him succeed this year. Right. And, yeah, so it was all because of me. Sign, <laughs> sign me was the first thing you said. Yeah. I can help you get better. That was a minimum contract. It wasn't that great. Okay. But uh, <laughs> on top of that, I think when you say, oh, do we want to give him a massive deal to become a starting quarterback, you look to the free agents this offseason, who the quarterbacks are that are going to be available. And as you look at this list, we don't know whether Tom Brady's going to be playing next year or not. Lamar Jackson on that list, obviously he pops off. The Ravens would be crazy to not franchise him and let him walk out the door. So you guys tell me, well, who do you want to give the $100 million contract to that you just look at and you say, well, they're head and shoulders above Daniel Jones and when they walk in the door, yes, they're going to take us to the Super Bowl and they're going to be our guy. I don't know if you see a name on that list that you feel a ton more confident in than Daniel Jones because he's showing you. Draft a guy. You can still bring Daniel Jones back and draft a guy. He'll be on a rookie contract for four years. So, yes, you can still draft a guy, develop him. And the way NFL contracts are, you can give Daniel Jones a contract that has an out after two, maybe three years, and this guy steps in and becomes your guy. Jimmy Garoppolo, Trey Lance was the guy yeah. this year. It has been done. So, to me, yes, you pay Daniel Jones, you bring him back because now you go into next year and you feel confident. Okay, we have a quarterback. We can draft a guy, develop him, and when he's ready, we can insert him into the starting lineup. I'm still in a holding pattern with this one. I was unsure about it coming into this season anyways and kind of the how could he convince people that he was the guy. And I think he's done a lot, but I st I'm just still not quite there. And I think it actually helps him to kind of be in this uh, to be compared to Zach Wilson just in this market and the fact that, like, well, look at what Daniel Jones is doing versus and his development versus Zach Wilson. So I, I just – there's still a lot of football left to be played, I think, against a lot of really good teams in that division in particular. So I think he's trending in the right way. But the guy, capital T, capital G, I'm still not quite sold on Daniel Jones and his future, knowing what you're going to have to pay him. Mm -hmm. But credit Joe Shane for going on a trade deadline Tuesday <laughs> on the season with Peter Schrager. That's what they do. Yeah. That's what these GMs what and coaches do. do. They want to get on the show. Uh, <laughs> I'll say real quickly, $100 million for a quarterback right now is like a penny in the bucket. Oh these gosh. guys are making $200, $250 million. Yeah. 
and I don't know how ownership can sell. If they go like 10 and 7 or they win 11 games, there's no way ownership can sell. We're, we're starting over a quarterback. Yeah. Again, yeah. I think True. Daniel Jones has done enough. Second half of the season is, is big. It's huge. It's big yeah. for Got to make the playoffs. It's big for Saquon.